Now we will talk about the motional electromotive force. This is the index we are going to talk. So we are going to talk about the motional electromotive force, the fact in numerous experiments and time varying magnetic fields. When an EMF is caused by non-electric means, it is called as induced EMF. The magnetic force is considered to be non-electric, that distinction is misleading. Let us consider a straight conductor moving in a uniform and time independent magnetic field. A rectangular conductor P, Q, R, S in which the conductor P, Q is free to move. The rod P, Q is moved towards the left with the constant velocity V as depicted here. Assume that there is no loss of energy due to friction. P, Q, R and S forms a closed circuit enclosing an area that changes as P, Q moves. It is placed in a uniform magnetic field B which is perpendicular to the plane of the system. If the length R and Q is equal to X and R Yes, is equal to L. The magnetic flux of phi B enclosed by the loop PQRS will be phi B is equal to B into L into X. Since X is changing with time, the rate of change of flux phi B will induce an EMF given by F strong equal to minus D phi B divided by DT is equal to minus D by DT of so, phi b is equal to b into l into x. So, minus d by dt of bl x. Where we have used dx by dt is equal to minus b. So, which is the speed of the conductor pq, the induced EMF of b into l into v is considered as motional EMF. Thus, we are able to produce induced EMF by moving a conductor or varying the magnetic field. That's by changing the magnetic flux enclosed by the circuit. It is also possible to explain the motional EMF expression by invoking the Lorentz force. Acting on the free charge carries carriers of conductor PQ. Consider an arbitrary charge Q in the conductor PQ. When the rod moves with the speed of V, the charge will also be moving with the speed V in the magnetic field B. The Lorentz force on this charge is considered as a Q into V into B in magnitude and its direction is towards Q. All charges experience the same force in magnitude and direction irrespective of their position in the rod PQ. So obviously the work done in moving the charge from P to Q is given by W is equal to Q into V into B into L. So as long the EM of is equal to W divided by Q. So, QVBL divided by Q. You will be getting B into L into V. This equation gives EMF induced across the rod PQ. And the basis of Faraday's law when the conductor is moving in a uniform and time independent magnetic field is proved. On the other hand, it is not obvious how an EMF is induced when a conductor is stationary. This one is moving, it is stationary. And the magnetic field is changing, a fact which Faraday verified by numerous experiments.
In a case of stationary conductor, the force on its charge is given by F is equal to Q into E plus V into B. Considering V is equal to 0, so Q into E. So become, this becomes become 0. Thus any charge, any force on the charge must arise from the electrical field T term E. Therefore, to explain the existence of induced EMF or induced current, we must assume that a time varying magnetic field generates an electrical field. So, the electrical field produced by a static electrical charges will be having properties different from those produced by time varying magnetic fields. Now, let's consider R be the resistance of the movable arm PQ of the conductor. We assume that the remaining arms QR, RS and SP will be having the negligible resistance comparable to the resistance R. Thus, the overall resistance of the rectangular loop is R. And this does not change as PQ is moved, obviously. The current I in the loop is given by I is equal to epsilon divided by R. As you know, epsilon is equal to B into LV. So, I is equal to B into LV divided by R. So, on account of the presence of the magnetic field, there will be a force on the arm PQ. This force I is equal to L into B is directed outwards in the direction opposite to the velocity of the rod. So this will be opposite to the velocity of the rod. So the magnitude of the force is given by F is equal to I into L into B. Replacing your I you will be getting b square l square v divided by r so the force arises due to the drift velocity of charges along the ro rod and the consequent Lorentz force acting on them alternatively the arm pq is being pushed with a constant speed v the power required to do this is p is equal to f into v so f is equal to b square l square v divided by r so we'll be getting b square l square into v square divided by r that's P. So thus the electrical energy which was needed to move the arm PQ is converted into electrical energy and then to thermal energy. So there is an interesting relationship between the charge flow to the circuit and the change in the magnetic flux. So, from Faraday's law, we have learned that the magnitude of the induced EMF epsilon is equal to delta phi b divided by delta t, where epsilon is considered as i into r. So, delta of q into q by delta t into r. So, where delta q is equal to delta phi b divided by r. So this is your magnitude of induced EMF.